Welcome to Library Time with Miss James. The book we're reading today is called What Do You Do with a Tale Like This? And it's by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. And uh, it makes me think of that song. What do you do ooh, ooh, with a tale like this? <laughs> like the, um, what's the commercial? Contact bar commercial? Yeah. So, this is, um, what do you do with a tale like this? Let's see. Hmm. Animals use their noses and their ears and tails and eyes and mouths and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find more about these animals. So sometime, if you want to look at this book in the library, I could let you borrow it because there's lots of information in the back. Today, we're just going to read the story part. What do you do with a nose like this? Wow, look at those different noses. Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. Can you guess what these are? One here. Here. In the middle. Here. This is one of my favorite books to read in the library with kids because it's so much fun. It's all guessing the different noses and tails and things. We'll see. Okay. So... The first one that we had, this one right here, is a platypus. Did you guess that right? If you're a platypus, you will use your nose to dig in the mud. That's what they use their noses for. <gasps> and if you guessed a dog here, well, you're wrong because it's not a dog. I would have thought it was a dog too, but nope, it is a hyena. And if you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. Mm -hmm. I bet you all got this one right. Remember the big one that was in the middle? This long one? What is that? You're right. It's an elephant. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. Mm -hmm. Did you know what that funny nose was with the... Look at that. It is a mole. <gasps> if you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. It's a mole. And then last, I bet you guessed that one. Either an alligator or a crocodile. And this one's a there is an alligator. And if you are an alligator, you will use your nose to breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. Okay. <gasps> What do you do with ears like these? I have ears now. Okay, so let's look around. Uh, what do you think this one is? Or this one? Or this one? Or theirs? Hmm. Lots to say. Or, oh, where's theirs here? Right. so this one in the middle was pretty easy, don't you think? Yeah. <gasps> if you're a jackrabbit, so this is a jackrabbit. <laughs> You'll use your ears to keep cool. So they use their ears to stay cool. All right, and then the one that looked like it was hanging upside down, right here. Did you guess that one right? It's a bat. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. Did you know that? Bats see with their ears? What? Wow. See with their ears. Mm-hmm. All right. And if you are a hippopotamus. See that? Hippopotamus. That was the, let's see, over here. Did you guess that one right? The hippopotamus. You're a hippopotamus. You close your ears when you are underwater. Wow, that'd be neat to be able to fold your ears and close them. Now, the one right here that we were like, what is that? 
ears, but also the little ears and little legs. It's a cricket. Did you guess a cricket? Well, if you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. On your knees. How great. What if your ear was on your knee? <laughs> Silly, isn't it? <gasps> and then that last one where it was real big and we're like, where's the ears? It's a humpback whale. And you hear sounds hundreds of miles away with those ears that we can barely even see. Yeah. So let's look real quick. I'm gonna see if I can find it in the back where all the extra information is. Let's say the bat, like all bats, make a constant series of clicks or chirps as it flies. They are t very high pitched and humans can't even hear them. Wow. These sounds bounce or echo off of nearby objects. By listening to those echoes, then a bat can move around in the dark to avoid running into, flying into things. So that's what it meant by they see with their ears because they've got to be, they make that noise and it bounces off and they're listening for that noise so they make sure that they don't run into anything. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I bet most of you already knew that. Probably not telling you anything you don't already know. Okay. What is this? Tails. So what do you do ooh, ooh, with a tail like this? <laughs> okay. Let's look at all these tails. Hmm. Five tails. Let's see. All right. So that first one, that one was kind of an easy one. What, or the second one right here. This long garden one with that. That one's kind of easy. That's a giraffe. Here's a giraffe. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. That'd be nice to have. Mm -hmm. And then this one, I know you knew what that was. A skunk. If you are a skunk, boop, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on its way. Better get away. And then that long green one up here is a lizard. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. <gasps> they break the tail off. And it's fine. Because what will they do? They'll grow another one. Yep. And that red one, ah, oh, that's a scorpion's tail. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. You don't want to get stung by a scorpion. And then that last one is, there's a lot of page turning in this one. <laughs> right here. That last one is a monkey. And you hang from a tree by your tail. Wow. Okay, so now what do you do with eyes like these? All right, let's look at the different eyes. Here we go. Ooh, look at those. Wow. What do you do with eyes like these? Well, if you're an eagle, here was the eagle's eye. If you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the air. So they have really good vision to be able to see way high up in the air and to scoop down. That means you're really fast too if you're an eagle. Okay, and then there is chameleon. Did you guess that one? But you did. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. Now that's interesting. So they can look this way. Maybe we'll look this way. We can only look one way, right? <laughs> only we can look like chameleons. They go and they're like, dum, dum, dum. Oh, their eyes are all crazy. Okay. Now, if you are, let's see what's next, a, oops, this one right here, a four-eyed fish, what? Four eyes, four-eyed fish, right down here. You look above and below the water at the same time. That's cool. If you are a horned lizard, remember this one? Horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Well, that seems unnecessary. Oh, wow. And if you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to 
to see clearly at night. And I love those that, those eyes on the bush baby. Look at that. They're so cute. There's big eyes. Mm. Now, what do you do with feet like these? Can you guess these feet? In there? What you think? In there? Oh. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. What do you do with feet like these? Well, I bet you guessed what this one was because it looks very similar to ours. But it's, it looks like a hand, actually. But it's actually a foot. And it belongs to a chimpanzee. And you feed yourself with your feet. So they use their feet instead of their hands to feed themselves. Now, if you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. I always get a laugh out of that when I'm reading to the kids. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. So there was the leg or the foot water strider. I bet you've seen these. We have these out here in the country a lot. Now, if you were a gecko, right here's the foot of a gecko. Oh, look, it is upside down. You can use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. Now, how cool would that be? And the last one of the feet is this right here is a mountain goat and if you're a mountain goat you leap from ledge to ledge that's how you use your feet it's leaping from ledge to ledge all right so we have done what all have we done eyes and ears and feet and tail what about a mouth <gasps> what do you do with a mouth like this so here's one that's in front of this Here's a mouth. Ooh, look at that one. Mouth, mouth, mouth. This is an interesting mouth, isn't it? Let's see. Well, if you're a, if you guess what this one was, a pelican. There's a pelican. Huh. You use your mouth as a, as a net to scoop up fish. Wow. Ah, no, this one was an easy one. That's a snake. If you are a snake, an egg-eating snake, use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. My daddy caught a snake the other day. I was holding it in his hand and sent me a picture. It was a chicken snake. They like to eat the bird the bird's eggs. All right, now this one, this interesting-looking one, was a mosquito. <gasps> if you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck the blood. They have an interesting mouth. Now, this long one, did you remember? I'm sorry, these pages. This long one right here. Oh, that is an anteater. <gasps> if you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. They have long tongues. And then the last one, that fish, that was an easy one too. You're an archer fish. You catch insects by shooting them down with streams of water. How cool is that? So they spit water up to get the insects and it shoots them back down. The water grabs it and brings it back down so they can eat it up. That's pretty neat. All right, so we have gone over all the different noses and ears and tails and eyes and mouths. It's pretty interesting. And then, like I said, I have lots of information in the back of all the animals. So if you want to know more, you can message me on our classroom and I can tell you more things about it or tell you where to look online if you've been, if you want to look at some videos. So I thought that was a pretty cool book, so I really like it, and I'm glad I got to share it with you today. I hope you are having a great day, and can't wait to see you. See you, hopefully see you soon. Bye.